We are the Alberta Energy Regulator, or AER. The Alberta Energy Regulator ensures the safe, efficient, orderly, and environmentally responsible development of hydrocarbon resources over their entire life cycle. This includes allocating and conserving water resources, managing public lands, and protecting the environment while providing economic benefits for all Albertans. This is a commitment we take seriously and one that extends to all areas of oil and gas development in Alberta, including the process of hydraulic fracturing. This animation explains the typical process used in Alberta to drill, complete, which includes hydraulic fracturing, and bring into production a horizontal well targeting unconventional gas or oil. We will discuss the nature of Alberta's unique geology and the role it plays in the development of our unconventional oil and gas reserves. We will also describe how the AER's strict regulatory requirements protect Alberta's usable groundwater by requiring steel casing and cement to isolate fluids inside the casing, restrict shallow fracturing operations, prohibit the use of toxic fluids above the base of groundwater protection, and regulate fluid storage on well sites and the disposal of waste fluids. After nearly a century of production in Alberta, industry has searched for and produced the most accessible energy resources and looked past those beyond its technological and economic reach. In recent years, however, new technologies and new ways of using established methods have emerged that allow companies to develop oil and gas resources that have been previously bypassed. These unconventional resources are oil and gas pools left undeveloped because of past technological limitations, such as shale gas, coal bed methane, and tight oil and gas formations. Horizontal multi-staged hydraulic fracturing is an example of one technology and process used to access the oil and gas resources from these formations. Beginning at the surface, soil sits atop surficial deposits across most of Alberta. Surficial deposits are the loose sands, gravels, and clays left behind by glaciers, rivers, or ancient lake beds. They are important sources of sand and gravel, and in some areas, can contain aquifers with usable water. These deposits sit on hard rock called bedrock. From the top of the bedrock down, most rock layers, known as formations, are capable of containing some amount of natural gas or oil. However, our best oil and gas are much deeper. The depth of these formations, which is capped by impermeable rock layers, separates shallow aquifers from the producing zones. Dozens of hydrocarbon-bearing formations are found in Alberta, but let's use the Duvernay as an example. This shale formation extends across much of northwest and central Alberta and is known to hold large amounts of liquids-rich natural gas and light oil. The Duvernay Formation lies some 3,000 meters below the surface, the equivalent of 16 Calgary Towers stacked one atop the other. It is considered to be an unconventional play because unlike most sandstone or carbonate formations, shale lacks permeability, tiny pathways that allow fluids to flow through the rock. The Duvernay, like most oil and gas bearing formations, lies well beneath the base of groundwater protection. Groundwater that is used for human consumption is found at relatively shallow depths. Protecting this resource is important. The base of groundwater protection is characterized not so much by depth, but rather the salt content of the groundwater. The general rule is, the deeper you go, the saltier the water becomes. In Alberta, the base of groundwater protection is found at between 100 and 600 meters, depending on the area of the province. It is established where the groundwater contains 4,000 milligrams per liter of total dissolved solids. Most water wells draw from aquifers at depths of less than 50 meters, which is far above the base of groundwater protection. This means that the groundwater Albertans drink is sourced hundreds or thousands of meters above most of the rock formations being targeted using horizontal wells and hydraulic fracturing. 
The technology used to drill a well that will be hydraulically fractured differs little from other types of wells. Operators must adhere to the same stringent requirements regardless of the type of resource being sought or technology used to bring it on production. Once the drilling rig is in place, operations can begin. A rotary bit drills a vertical hole, known as the well bore. Throughout the drilling operation, drilling fluid, also known as drilling mud, is pumped down the drill string, where it exits through the bit and returns to surface. This fluid must be non-toxic when drilling through rock above the base of groundwater protection. Drilling mud is used to lubricate and cool the bit, carry the drill cuttings to surface, and prevent fluids from entering the well bore, which can result in a blowout. Drilling continues before a string of pipe, called surface casing, is inserted the complete length of the well bore and fully cemented. If the surface casing is above the base of groundwater protection, the next casing string must also be fully cemented. The AER has very comprehensive regulations for cemented casing in all wells to protect groundwater by providing a barrier between the well bore and any nearby water sources. These requirements cover things such as strength tests for cement and steel casing. Drilling may now continue until the target formation is neared, where the bit begins drilling at an angle. This creates arc that changes the direction of the wellbore from vertical to horizontal, known as the build section. Another string of casing may be placed to the top of or through the build section. In most cases, the horizontal section of the well is also cased and cemented. This means that most wells in the province have two complete sets of casing and cement to protect the groundwater. Once completed, these horizontal sections are typically 1,200 to 2,000 meters in length. The drilling phase is now complete. The operator can now begin the completion phase, which readies the well for production. While many people believe hydraulic fracturing is a new technology, it's really nothing new at all. However, the technology has evolved over time. In Alberta, it has been in use since the 1950s. In fact, more than 174,000 wells have been fractured during that time. However, multi-staged fracturing in horizontal wells is newer to Alberta. More than 7,700 horizontal wells have been fractured. So how does hydraulic fracturing work? To produce oil and gas from shale or tight sandstone, the rock must be fractured. This is because these types of rocks lack the permeability or pathways that allow the oil and gas to flow through the rock, enter the well bore, and be produced to surface. The hydraulic fracturing process is therefore used to create permeability to allow these fluids to flow through the rock and into the well bore. The first step is to perforate the horizontal section. This tool perforates the well casing or liner with holes to allow fracture fluids to flow into the formation or oil and gas to flow into the well bore once production starts. The next step is the hydraulic fracturing. This can be carried out in a number of ways. Although in most cases, a zone at the end of the well, called the toe, is isolated and the fracturing begins. At surface, Numerous trucks pump the fracturing fluid down the hole. The composition of the fracture fluid can vary, but generally includes carrier, 
typically water, hydrocarbon-based fluids, or a gas, such as nitrogen. Propant, which is typically sand or ceramic beads that prop open the fractures in the rock. And chemical additives that reduce friction, prevent scaling, control the bacteria growth in the saline water, and thicken the fluid, among other functions. These additives generally represent less than 1% of the total volume of the liquids. AER requirements are designed to ensure fluids injected into the formation and produced back to surface are isolated from groundwater and surface water. AER regulations also require that companies report fracture fluid components. This information is posted to fracfocus.ca. As the fracture fluid is pumped into the wellbore, the pressure continues to build in the isolated zone until the rock cracks or fractures and the propant is forced into the cracks. The cracks typically spread out vertically from the wellbore to between 30 and 80 meters and between 100 to 200 meters laterally. Once the pressure from the fracturing operation subsides, the force exerted from the tremendous weight of the rocks above can cause the cracks to close. The propant injected during the fracturing process prevents the cracks from completely closing. After the first portion of the horizontal section has been fractured, the operation is repeated several times along the length of the horizontal section, resulting in multiple stages. The number of fracturing stages varies, but it is commonly between 6 and 20. When the well is finally placed on production, the fluids used in the fracturing process are the first to be produced along with the first volumes of gas or oil. The volume of fracture fluid becomes less over time until only hydrocarbons are produced. Normally, around 20 to 60% of the fracture fluids are returned to surface. The rest remain in the producing formation. Once at surface, these fluids are separated from the oil or gas, at which point they may be recycled and reused or disposed of underground in a deep storage well. AER requirements for waste fluid handling and disposal are very comprehensive. For example, fluids that cannot be recycled or reused must be re-injected and stored in rock formations deep underground, far below groundwater sources, or sent to an authorized treatment facility. The AER strictly forbids the use of unlined storage pits as a means to store the fluids that flow back to the surface. Finally, any treated water cannot be reintroduced into Alberta's waterways. As we've discussed, Alberta's geology is well suited for both the development of unconventional oil and gas and for deep disposal of waste fluids. The AER has strong regulations in place to ensure groundwater is protected throughout the drilling and fracturing phases, the production and cleanup processes, and finally, waste disposal. This is achieved by protecting usable aquifers from fluids in the casing through the mandatory use of steel casing and cement, restricting shallow fracturing operations, prohibiting the use of toxic fluids at shallow depths, and carefully regulating waste fluid handling practices. You can learn more about how the AER regulates hydraulic fracturing by visiting our website, AER. Dot C.A.